Y'all sing that loud too. Y'all pretty loud this morning. Let's refocus all that pent up talking into music to the Lord. So let's take our hymnals and stand and sing page 224. And we're going to sing it twice, okay? We are standing on holy ground. And I know. Oh. 
on holy ground. Thank you, maybe six. You never know what I'm gonna throw out at you, but stay on your toes. I want to welcome everybody to Local Baptist Church this morning. This is our time of announcements and prayer. Is there any announcements? Uh, announcements. I am leaving today, not long after church. I got to be in Thomasville in the morning, 8 o'clock, for some uh, training for work. So I will not be here tonight. Now, y'all, if anybody wants to do something tonight, that's fine. But Becky and I will not be here tonight. Okay, so just let y'all know. Okay. Y'all want to do something, or you can call it off, whichever one you want to do, but I will not be here. Okay. Does Stephen know you're not going to be here? I don't know. Okay. I have my talk. If I knew he wasn't going to be here today, yeah. and with him not being here today, I didn't want to put it on him, and he was going to be busy this morning. So I didn't really even approach him with it. So. Okay. Is that something we want to decide now? We want to decide, I mean, we've got to decide it now. I guess at this short notice, just call it off. I mean. Okay. No Sunday night service. We need to call Miss Janet, too. I don't know if she was here last Sunday. We probably need to let her know in case she would come in. Any more announcements? We still need people to sign up for the church sign. We have several months open. Okay. Anyone else? We're going to have supper here Wednesday night on Valentine's Day. Um, just a candy salad and um, brand new desserts. Um, there's a sign up sheet back here if y'all would really like to put your name on there. Okay. About 6.615. Anything else? All right, we're going to our prayer list. Anybody need to be added to the prayer list? Yes, sir. All right. Jason Crook, I talked to his uncle when I go to there, and the tumor in his head has shrunk down from 5.5 centimeters down to 1.5 in his head. And he's doing a whole lot better. Then we got this idea is important. He's been put on the prayer list because I kept Christ's hair yesterday, and he said it's probably just going to be a matter of time. They bought hospice in and everything. He said it could be today. Or it could be six weeks from now. <laughs> and then also, the people that had the wreck out here uh, at the end of the room and three seven days out there, that's <laughs> got away. Um, <laughs> Judy Quatner and uh, Michael Andrews. So, both of them are in the hospital in very bad shape. So, Michael, this is Michael, Michael. But, but, but I know he's still very touching that Judy's got a, a broke leg, broken arm, three broke ribs. Oof. She's got a hundred and something staples in her head. And uh, she does have some kind of spinal injury, but they don't think it's going to be severe enough to where she won't be able to walk. Okay. And a fractured hip. Man. So. All right. My mom, my mom's back home uh, at her place. And she's doing well. She's recovering. She's Good. Thank you for all the prayers. She's up. She's kind of going to exercise. She's going to do it a little bit longer. She's doing well. Okay. Um, last week I said my boss's um, sister was very sick and they brought her hospice. She actually passed away, um, I think it was late Thursday night or Friday morning. Uh, she passed away peacefully in her sleep. So my boss will be grieving her. Kind of changed it to the Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Okay. Anyone else for the prayer list? I saw him say something about Jason Crook. Was that 
but you also know things about Bobby Seymour. I hadn't. Yeah, I hadn't. I hadn't heard any more. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Because they didn't give him long after he got diagnosed, did they? Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Anyone else? All right, if we don't have anybody else, we're going to our praises. Anybody got any praises for this week? <laughs> what the <laughs> His link being his link being don't says don't say retired. It says open for work. <laughs> so I mean, he's just waiting. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? If we don't have any more, Jimmy, will you lift these up, please?
All right, if everyone please take your inspirations. We're going to sing a song in here, and then we'll have our offertory hymn after that. We're going to sing in two this week, okay? Last week got a little confused with that. So if you would please take your hymnals, I mean your inspirations, stand. Everybody knows you got to stand. 151. Do what? <laughs>
going to get started this morning we've got a question on the board and um, before we get started this morning uh, I can take a quick survey raise your hand if you'd rather have beets and potatoes like them both we got some both okay I take that as a no Melissa okay no beets All right. so more beets pickle, pickle peaches pickle peaches that sounds good so that, you know, beets not real popular. Maddie, what about you? You like beets? N no. Have you ever had a beet? You've never had a beet? Mandy, you've never given your child a beet? No, I did. I'll bring some beets Wednesday night. <laughs> there you go. Maddie, so y'all can have beets Wednesday night. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, this morning's message is uh, we're going to have a good time. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna enjoy a few things. We're gonna kind of kind of cut up one another about it. Um, but there is a reason, y'all. Stay with me. I am going somewhere with this. Chuck and I was getting ready a while ago. Stephanie had already lined everything out. And by the way, Becky, it does no good to give Stephanie anything early in the week. Okay. Yeah, you know what she said when I walked up a while ago. I just ain't had time to get the thing together like I wanted to. I'm like, I give it to you Tuesday. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's terrible. That's terrible, you know. The only, difference, the only difference is mine's three dogs. Other than that, I do the same thing you do. Oh, and a foster dog, okay. <laughs> so, here we go. Stephanie done a fantastic job of putting it together. Chuck and I kind of went and added to after it was all said and done. So, Balin, just pay attention. You'll probably be able to see the stuff that me and Chuck added. So, it's going to be good stuff. We're going to have a good time with it. But all of this come from, if y'all are blessed today because of this message, I'm fixing to tell you what brought all this about. I'm at the plant the other day working, and <clears throat> I'm in the shop. And it's not very long before we, we go to break. So I, I decide I'm going to drink my Diet Coke. So I go across the plant. I walk into the, to the cafeteria there. And I take my card. I swipe the thing. And it says card approved. Select your item. I hit the Diet Coke button. It's out. And a drink falls out. No label. No label. What color was it? Huh? What color, what color what? <laughs> it was dark. But that's still. So, in the midst of all this, in our drink machine, we've got Mr. Pibbs. We've got Cherry Coke. We've got Diet Coke. We've got Regular Coke. So, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, my wife has me on a very strict diet right now. I drank the wrong thing. I'm going to get in trouble. I didn't really say that, but well, I, that's right. Mary said, "What? What?" 
There you go. But it's funny how God works. And it's so funny how he can take the simplest thing, if you'll just pay attention, and tell you or show you something. Now, you got to figure, we've got a message in a church with this many people in it today that God has given us only because a drink fell out of a drink machine with no label on it. I mean, it's just so simple how we can just take little everyday things and actually use them for our benefit or for somebody else's benefit or to enhance God's kingdom. It's just, it's just, it just, it, oh, it's overwhelming every day how many sermons we are uh, presented with. Do we always see them? No. As a matter of fact, do we miss most of them? Yes. But God presents us with so many things. He really does. And I'm thinking to myself, I stood there and looked at it. And there was people in there. And it's like for one, just, just a few seconds in time, I'm standing there looking at the drink. Now, I know, I already know I'm going to drink it. I don't care what it is. It ain't going to make a difference to me. It can be whatever. It could be root beer. I love root beer. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Root beer is where it's at. And I'm sitting there looking at it. I know I'm going to drink it. But for that one little brief moment, it was like nobody else in the world existed. It was just me standing there looking at that bottle thinking to myself, the Lord has just given me next week's sermon. Just that easy. Just that quick. So <clears throat> to go on with what's going on, uh, Jeff Franklin, which is a, is a dear man, a dear man that I work with. He's, uh, he's in the Gideons with uh, Perry. Uh, he's a dear man. He really is. He's, he's a really loving man. Uh, he, he loves people. He loves the Lord. And he's just a, he's just a great person to be around. And um, he and I had the same office. So we share an office together. And the other day, I'm sitting up there in the office. This is like a couple of days after the, after the coat thing. I said, Jeff, we're going to have a message this week, and you ain't going to believe what it's about. He said, what's that? I said, it's about a label that wasn't on a, on a drink when it come out of the drink machine. I said, that's just showing me that you never know what you're going to get. You know, you never know what the next day is going to bring. And it just shows me that I didn't know what it was. And a lot of times, ain't that life? We don't know what the next day is going to be. Life's like a box of chocolate. Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> Becky, you're exactly right. You are, and you are so right. Well, guess what? Jeff Franklin has his own version of life is like a box of chocolates. And that's why we got the message today that we got. He said, that reminds me when we were young. And Jeff is in his 60s. <clears throat> he says, that reminds me when we were young. He said, and I'm almost positive he said this, but if I'm wrong, it won't matter one way or the other. His dad, when he was just a wee thing, worked at a grocery store. And back then, everything, did anything come in plastic containers 60 years ago? It was one or two materials. It was either glass or it was a can. And it wasn't an aluminum can, it was a can can. A steel can, that's exactly right. And he said his dad worked at the grocery store and they would have truckloads of canned goods come in and sometimes, guess what? The can wouldn't have no label on it. Can wouldn't have no label on it. And he said what the grocery stores would do back then is they would put them all in a big box and then put like the whole box on sale at one time because nobody knew what it was. So, Jeff said he spent most of his growing up life eating stuff out of cans that didn't have no labels on them. <clears throat> but what was so hilarious about it and to show you the way the Lord just puts things together and just ties everything in, he told me this. He said, Marty, he says, we got good at what we was doing. He said we would come in from outside or come in from wherever they were working or doing their chores or whatever. When dad got home and mama got ready to cook supper or whatever, daddy would tell us to go pick out our vegetables for the night. <laughs> and we would walk into a pantry that was full of cans with no labels. He said, but we got good at that. He said we got to where we could shake them cans. And he said we could tell what was inside them cans by the way we shook them. He said, I could tell you what was string beans 
He said, I can tell you what was corn, either whole kernel or cream. And he just went on and on about the different things he could tell. He said, but there was one thing that we never could figure out. He said, beets in a can and the little white potatoes in the can sound exactly the same. <laughs> and he said this, and he says, and I don't like beets. <laughs> but the thing about it was he knew, this is way back then. Did you throw food away way back then? No, you didn't. You ate it. Dad would say, go in there and pick out your vegetables. And they would went in there and they'd pick out everything just like they wanted it. But they couldn't tell if it was beets or they couldn't tell if it was potatoes. He said if it was potatoes, oh my goodness, they were going to have a good supper that night. He said, but if it was beets, he knew he was going to have to eat at least one. And he said, I don't like beets. Ain't that life? Ain't, ain't that life? Ain't life a box of chocolates? Especially this day and time. This day and time you buy a box of chocolates, you may not get but one in there that's fit and eat. When you bite something and the inside is a color that cannot be described, nor a taste, nor a texture, nor a viscosity, that's, eh, that's so many different ways to spell ick. But ain't life like beets and potatoes? You want so bad for the can to be one thing, but it isn't always. No, it's not. <clears throat> and there is so much more of a serious side to all this. But Chuck and I got together, and I'm going to blame most of this on him because if y'all don't like it, blame him. If you do like it, I was the one that had all the good input. So that's, that's where we're going to go with this. Some of you may have never seen what we're fixing to look at. Hopefully all of y'all have. No, I'm just joking. Chuck done a fantastic job of helping me out with it. Uh, he's really on board with this. He feels real good about it. He's excited. And I showed him, we looked at these pictures, and he just sat there for the whole time, and he just, he just stared with amazement at some of the pictures we were looking at. And he just, oh, he said, oh, my goodness, I, I just have to keep looking at these pictures. I might not even have to be able to pay attention to you this morning because I love these pictures so much. Life is like a box of chocolates. The drinks come sometimes without labels. Is it going to be beets or potatoes? What is tomorrow going to be? We don't know. Is tomorrow going to be beets? Is tomorrow going to be potatoes? But now here's the kicker. We talk about tomorrow. We, we talk about the next five minutes. Chuck, hit us with a picture. What do we got? What is that? Jack in the box. Now, ain't he a playful looking little thing? Huh? Chuck, we're in trouble, buddy. We are, we are in, we are in, he's not playful looking? No? Chuck, we have really dug ourselves. Buddy, you have helped me dig myself a hole. For everybody in YouTube land and everybody in the church today, me and Chuck thought that this was a playful looking, wonderful clown to use to start off these pictures. <coughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to that, Jimmy. I'm gonna get to that, Jimmy. We're getting there. Okay. All right. So there's a theme here. We're not gonna talk about it yet because I feel like we hadn't gotten to the we hadn't got to the, the to the point of really grasping what I'm talking about. So we're looking at a jack in the box. These old folks have been having too. Oh yeah. Now I am going to be honest with y'all. These pictures are going to progress. Okay, we're going to progress with these jacket box pictures. Me and Chuck thought that was a great little picture, especially if it had been a lot of little kitties in here. No, Tristan. No, don't like the picture of that. Avalyn, sweetheart, what you think? You think that's a pretty cool picture? No, don't like that one. Don't do clowns. Don't do clowns. Annalise, no. Okay. <laughs> Balin, okay. Chuck, show us the next picture. <laughs> that one is we we picked this one for a reason because this one is overly hideous. This one is one of those that you look at and you say, okay, this you can tell this is this is like one of the movies that you watched years ago that 
the scary monster was just too stupid to be a scary monster. I mean, how many of us has laughed at a horror movie before because it was so cheap and the scary monster was just, just no. And now you go back, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that was the next one right there. So, Chuck, maybe we should have started with this one because the clown evidently ain't working. All right, so we're going to progress. We're progressing now. Chuck, go with the next one. What about that one? No. We don't like, don't like clowns? Don't like, what about that one? That's, that one is a little creepy. That's, that's a little creepy. It's a Melissa, I'm glad. I love that. I, I, we want, I almost told you while ago to please leave Logan in here today. <clears throat> Chuck and I have already picked out Logan's Halloween costume for this coming year. Okay. We're fixing to see a slide of it. <laughs> so, okay, this one's a little boogerish. There were several of them of Pennywise. I mean, there was a lot of Pennywise Jack in the Boxes. So this is, this is one. Uh, but we still haven't got there yet. And the amazing thing about it is when you get there, you're going to say, well, that's not bad. Oh, boy, yeah, it is. It really is. Chuck, go with it. What's the next one? What about that? What about that one? Yes. That is a zombie doll jack-in-the-box. Zombie doll jack-in-the-box. Y'all are thinking to yourself now, what is this idiot showing us all these pictures of? Why? Chuck, no, they're not. They don't... That's, see, that was, that's what Chuck was thinking. I'm showing you all these for a reason. There's a reason I'm behind all this. Maddie, you ever seen this before? You got one of these at the house? No, Balin, you got one of these Jack in the Boxes at the house? Does anybody own a zombie Jack in the Box? No. Okay, so all these have been weird, cool, creepy, whatever you want to. The last one is the one that's going to give Chuck nightmares. So, Stephanie, tonight, when you get home... Please tuck him in. Yes, Do I? Yes, wake up in the middle He he has to wake up in the middle of the night and go outside. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. He won't go outside tonight. Okay. And you're thinking to yourself, what kind of grotesque, awful-looking, gnarly-looking, creaturish type thing are we fixing to see in this next slide? This next slide is truly amazing, is it not, Chuck? There we go. Chuck said, this is the one that Chuck said, I can't keep looking at this because this, this will make you think weird things. Chuck, show it to him, buddy. Look at that. Oh, yeah. What about that one? Yeah. Yeah. Balin, is he spooky looking? Is he creepy looking? What about it? Annalise, you making a face? No. Not that bad? Okay, when I saw that thing, like scared me to death. That thing like a booger. That thing like a booger right there. He, he evil. He's evil. Why are we going through this series of ridiculously hideous, creepy, or stupid looking jack in the boxes? Why are we doing that? What is the whole thing about jack in the boxes? What are they designed to do? Surprise you. That's exactly right. Now, I want everybody to get the earworm and take home with them today of Pop Goes the Weasel. So, dun, 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 dun. Now, y'all can take that home with you and you can walk around the house today while you're doing whatever you're doing and say, God, why do you have to mention that song? But the thing about the Jack in the Box was you start turning that crank and you know something's going to happen, but do you know when? Huh? Not always. No, not the real ones. Now, I guarantee you this one will come out before the song is over. <laughs> <clears throat> but the whole concept of the Jack in the Box is to surprise you. The whole concept of life is the fact that... <laughs> I ain't going to tell you what them two are talking about. The whole concept of life is the fact that we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. Not only do we not know what tomorrow is going to bring, we don't know when tomorrow is going to happen. A lot of people are going to say, well, tomorrow never gets here. It's true. It doesn't. I understand that. But there will be a day. As a matter of fact, a lot of us have already suffered that day. A lot of us have already had 
of course, that information that we didn't want. A lot of us have already been through the fact that without Christ in our heart, when we get that phone call or when we get that message or you get that or you see that vision without Christ in our heart, it makes life basically almost unbearable. And we never know when it's going to happen. We don't know. And we can never prepare ourselves without Christ for the day when something happens. Now, a lot of us have lost loved ones. A lot of us have had things happen to us and things like that. But let's just go a little bit further. Our day is coming. Okay? Our day is coming. Billy, your day is coming. Hal, your day is coming. Bailey, your day is coming. Scott, your day is coming. Aaron, your day is coming. Kathy, your day is coming. Allison, your day is coming. Bubba, your day is coming. Everybody, everybody in here has a day that is coming. Are you prepared for it? Are you prepared for the day that the Jack in the Box releases, comes out, and it all comes screeching to a halt. Are you prepared for the day when the breath in the lungs, the blood going through the heart, the, the, the life that we can't see but they know it exists, when that life in the flesh stops? Are we prepared for that? Do you know when that's coming? Do you, do you know when it's coming? No, you do not. Life is essentially this. It's like a box of chocolates. It's beets or potatoes. It's the drink without the label on it. it. Life is an unknown. And it's also a jack in the box. Because you don't know when whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So why wouldn't you prepare yourself for what takes place when it happens? We've got some verses coming up. <clears throat> and I told Chuck while we were looking at these verses, <clears throat> there is one word in one of these verses that I think is the most powerful way that you could ever put a scripture. I thank God just for the way, the way he wrote this, the way he told the writers to write this, it's, it's, it's just so powerful. So powerful. So, Balin, what does it mean when something is opposite from something else? What does the word opposite mean? When it's not the same. Okay. Aaron, if you was going to use degrees from 1 or 0 to 360, what is opposite? 180. If life is going one way, What's always there? The 180. That's exactly right. Life's going good. What's 180? Bad. Bad. Life's going mundane. What's the opposite? Never stop. Something awful's happened. Life is upside down. Life is chaos. Becky and I have been through this. And it is, you, you think... You think when we say stuff like this, it is, you, you think it sounds so trivial, but it wasn't to us during the time. My wife and I lived a very structured, a very planned, a very designed life when we still lived in Warrington. We did. Life was good. And then the 180 happened. And for three years, our life was upside down. And it was exhausting. And that's just something as simple as building a house. You say, well, that's just something simple. Not as far as me and her is concerned. It wasn't. It wasn't simple to us. We had some hard days. We had some tough days. So don't always think that every day is going to be a, a good chocolate. Don't always think that every day is going to be when you pick up the chocolate out of the thing, who's, who, who's, who had, what's the favorite? Give me some favorites. What's your favorite? Connie, what's your favorite chocolate in a box of chocolates? Never mind. <laughs> what, caramel? 
Cameron, got Cameron. What about the crunch? Anybody like the crunch? Like oh yeah, the crunch. Oh yeah, crunch. Yeah, yeah. I gotta have the crunch. Don't give me none of that orange stuff. No, don't the orange stuff. Yeah. Well, life ain't always gonna be caramel and crunches. And oh boy, when you mix them together, you get a hundred thousand dollar ball. That is like wow. Yo, yeah. <clears throat> but life is not always going to be what you want. And life is also not always going to go as you plan. How about that? But we're fixing to talk about the exact opposite, just like Balaam said. We're going to talk about the exact opposite of the unknown. Of the unknown. I picked on Balaam. It's time to pick on Annalise. Annalise. Tell me, in your personal opinion, what the definition of absolute is. Total. Total? Very good. Very good. Total is good. Avalyn? Absolute. What does absolute mean to you? 100%. Very good. Tristan? Like she said, 100%. Very good. Absolute. Do y'all know that the actual definition of absolute is not exactly what I thought it was? Diane, were you aware that absolute is not exactly what they said? It's actually quite interesting what the definition of absolute is. Chuck, hit us with the first definition of absolute. Listen to what it says. Viewed or existing independently and not in relation to other things. Not relative or comparative. Is that not interesting? How many sermons can be built just off of that? Scott, look at the words in that. Look at, how does Christ exist? Independent of everything else. He needs nothing else to exist. He don't need food. He don't need water. He don't need air. He don't need ground to walk on. He don't need anything else because he's always existed. Everything that come after him is something that he created. So he exists independent, standing alone, Above everything else. Not in relation to other things. How about that? You can't relate anything to Christ. You can't look at him and put him in the same relation with anything else. Anybody else. It doesn't work. It doesn't fit. He didn't break the mold. He created the molds. But look at the rest of it. I think the, the last part, not relative or comparative. How about that word right there? How, what do you think about that? If we're thinking about Jesus Christ, can anything compare to Jesus Christ? Anybody want to go out on a limb? I don't have this verse today, but anybody want to go out on a limb and tell me what John 14, 6 says? What about that? Are you going to give it a swirl? I'll kick it off for of somebody if you'll try to finish the rest of it. Coney, are you asking Jill or is Jill asking you? You trying to trying to come? Oh, so you're gonna ask Jill to confirm what you're thinking. That's uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. Teamwork. Teamwork. Coney, go with it. What does it say? It is. I am the way. The truth and the life, no one comes to the Father except through me. You know what he said right there? Nothing else in this world compares to me. Nothing. Nothing compares to Jesus. Not the greatest preacher that ever walked the face of the earth. Not any man-made religion that walks the face of the earth that's ever been created. Not any person that ever claimed to be a prophet. Not even anybody else in God's word, in the, one, in, the, in the most famous people that we know of in church, none of them compare to Christ Jesus. You cannot compare anything to Christ Jesus. What's the word? Annalise and them have already told us what the word is, 100%. So absolute meaning you 100% cannot compare anything to Christ Jesus. So do you think this is very interesting? For a definition for the word. I wasn't expecting this. I really wasn't. I was expecting to hear exactly what the kid said. I really was. Second one, Chuck. No, that ain't where you going. 
You never know he's going to pop up. That, that's true. Good point. Now that could have been very well been somebody else's jack in the box moment. That, that was very good, Chuck. <coughs> Chuck, you done well. A value or principle which is regarded as universally valid. Hmm. Is that not interesting? Or which may be viewed without relation to other things. Now the bottom part of it, we already talked about that. But look at that first part. A value or principle which is regarded as universally valid. Did Jesus come to save some? Jesus come to save all. So the people that's bombing Israel, the people that's raping the women, the people that's killing the children, the people that's doing all those things, even though we bear an intense dislike or for some of us even a hatred toward that people group or those people, Christ actually died for the, on the cross for them too. Because there's nobody ever been born that Christ didn't die on the cross for. And you know one thing about it? At the end of the day, as far as God is concerned, in relation to sin, we are just as guilty as they are. Because where we get in trouble is trying to compare our sins to their sins. And as far as God is concerned, all sins are all sins. And we make a mistake with that. We make a very, very valid mistake with that. We try to justify our being by saying that we're better or not as sinful as somebody else. When as far as God is concerned, we're just as guilty. Everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. So we're fixing to go into some verses now. I'm going to break these verses down. We're going to take just a few minutes. These are fantastic verses. These are verses of inspiration these are verses of absolutes these are verses of concrete evidence these are verses of, uh, of of being built on a stone these are verses that no matter what's going on around you you can go to and you can know that if you've got Christ Jesus in your heart you can go to these verses and you can say wow it doesn't matter what this world hands me I have Jesus that's what these verses are going to show you. So no matter what's going on in your life, I've got these verses. I have Christ Jesus. No matter what I just lost in life, I have these verses because I have Christ Jesus. Everything about these verses are so powerful. Because we started out today's sermon with the, with the silly, with the funny. But in the utmost sense of everything, we started out with the unknown. I'm fixing to introduce you to the known, to the absolute. We went from the unknown to the absolute. And there is not one person in here that wants to live the rest of their life not knowing where you're going when you die. Not one of you. Everybody in here wants to be able to answer that question. If somebody asks you, where are you going when you die? You want to know a reason, you want to know an answer, but do you want it to be so-so answer? No. You want it to be a real answer. An absolute answer. Chuck, hit us with the first verse. 1 John 5, 12 and 13. 1 John 5, 12 13. Write these down. <clears throat> Listen to what this says. You think, you think Jesus ain't important? Listen to what it says. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. Let's just stop right there. Let's just stop before we even go to 13. Melissa, has there ever been a more easy phrase in all of God's word to understand other than what we just said? I mean, how can you get, can you, that's as plain as it gets. That, would you say that that is an, a condition of absolute? Yes. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the absolute. Black and white. Black and white. That's a black and white. There's no middle of the road to that right there. Whoever has the son has life. For those of you that might not understand what we're talking about, I'm going to use another way of putting it. I'm not adding to God's word. I'm just helping you understand. For those of us who has been born again, 
you have life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. <clears throat> Becky and I know people, we've known people that can spend 40 years of their life, 50 years of their life going to church calling themselves Christians but still not have that absolute Still not have that absolute. Melissa, you know what I'm talking about? There are some people right now, if you walked up to them in church and said, Do you know, brother or sister, right now that if you let die in a car wreck on the way home, if you're going to heaven, first thing you're going to get is the deer in the headlight look. You know why? Because they don't like thinking about it. They don't want to have to think about reality. Well, let me tell you something. Do you think either one of them people were planning on that to happen at the end of Mandy's Road? No. No. I guarantee you neither one of them got up that morning or that afternoon or whenever the wreck was and planned. And I guarantee you neither one of them guys said, I think I'll go and be in a horrific wreck today. There's your jack-in-the-box moment. There's your jack-in-the-box moment. Now, I do want to say one thing about what Melissa said a while ago. Sometimes the end comes at what we deem the end. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Sometimes the end comes at what we deem as the end. What do we see? What, is, what are some things we see toward the end? Do we see things like maybe possibly dementia? Do we hear the phrase congestive heart failure? Do we hear, what are some of the other things? Y'all have to, what are some of the other things that goes along with a person literally succumbing to, 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 to their age and whatever. What else? Help me. Hospice. What is, hospice. You hear hospice. Yeah, you do. You, do, you hear hospice. But some of the ailments. What are some of the ailments? What? Stop eating. Stop eating. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That, that's amazing, but it's Failure true. To thrive. What? Failure to thrive. Failure to thrive. Give me some, give me some, di give, uh, give me some symptoms. Low oxygen. Low oxygen. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes we can see the end of the song coming. Doesn't mean it's any better or any worse. I'm not, I'm not saying one way or the other. But, you know, I watched my dad not too long ago. Becky watched her dad not too long ago succumb to life, succumb to the age, succumb to the health problems. It happens. Sometimes the end comes when the end is supposed to. Wow, that's a really crazy way to put it, ain't it? We're, no, you don't, but you see the writing on the wall a lot of times. What I'm saying is, it's, it's, if you're supposed to live 80 years, you're born here, and 80 years down the road, if everything goes well, you'll live, you know, you may live to a 90, may live 100, may live 70, but somewhere along in there. It's the ones that don't make it even halfway that have the jack-in-the-box moment. We're never prepared for that. So why wouldn't you want to know what's going to happen to you because as you sit here today, as we all sit here today, we don't know when our jack-in-the-box moment is coming. It can come halfway through the song. It can come on the second crank. Boom, there he is. Chuck, go to the next verse. <coughs> John 5, 24 says this. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Oh, this is good. And will not be judged, oh, this is good, but has crossed over from death to life. Becky, how important is that last, the last one, two, three, four, five, the last five words that we just read? How important is it that we understand exactly what that's talking about? It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. If you sit here right now without Christ Jesus in your heart, without accepting him, without being born again, the end of this verse says, over from death to life. That means if you've not crossed over yet, where are you at? Death. You are literally sitting here in death. What death am I talking about? Am I talking about the stopping of the body? No. Spiritual. It means dying without ever being with God. 
It means dying without ever going to heaven. It means dying and succumbing and going to a sinner's hell. It means all the awful things without being born again. I'm, look, I'm not a hellfire brimstone preacher. I'm not. I'm not going to pick this up and throw it at anybody because I heard they went to the club last night. I, that's not me. I, I, don't, I don't do that. I don't care. I, you know, look, I mean, your business is your business. If it affects our relationship or if it affects your relationship with the Lord, then we got a problem. But the point of the matter is, I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to do anything about what you do. That's between you and the Lord. My job is just to tell you how serious the outcome is if you don't listen to the words that's being said. That's all my job is. My job is not to judge anybody. My job is to present to you the word that tells you what's going to happen if you don't. Very truly, I tell you, is it important, Becky, when he says very truly? Yes. Yes. Perry, what is he doing right there? He's putting the emphasis. So you listen. Yeah, you better listen. Very truly, I tell you, whoever hears my word, that means all of it. And believes him who sent me, which is God himself, the Father himself, has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to to life. Scott, what's your verse? Uh, Romans 8 and 1. What's it say? Therefore, there is no condemnation for those that are Christ Jesus. Very good. That verse actually, it, it, it says this. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those which are in Christ Jesus. You know what that means? That meant before then there was condemnation. Yeah. So that means you were in condemnation. This verse says if you don't know Christ Jesus, you are in death right now. You are in death. You don't know what chocolate you're going to get tomorrow. And you don't know when the jack in the box is going to pop his head out. You say, well, that just sounds silly. I don't care what you think it sounds like. Call it a parable. I don't care. Doesn't matter. I'm trying to explain to you in a way that I think you can understand it because it's the way I can understand it. We don't know when whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And it could be ugly. Ugly is that first clown that nobody liked that I thought was cute. Chuck, I read we just took, took them and inverted them, Chuck. We'll do that next time. Next verse, please. <clears throat> Looking for that. Oh, this is the one. This is the one. Therefore, y'all got, this is fantastic. Therefore, he is able to save completely. At least it's completely and absolute kind of the same thing. Completely, 100%, absolute, 100%, yes. So let's look at it this way. Therefore, he is able to save completely. Those who come to God, there's that word again. Sikoni, there's your word. How? Through him. Because he always lives to intercede for them. That's all of us. But then this is where it gets good. Such a high priest truly meets our need. One who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. What is the most important word in that whole entire verse? Need. One. How about that? One. One need. Such a high priest truly meets our need. Does it say needs? Plural. No. Need. Jill, what do you think that need is? Do you think it's anything worldly? No, it's not. What is the human soul, what does the human soul need? Eternity with Christ Jesus. Simple as that. The high priest can truly meet that need. He can do it completely. Again, we're talking about absolutes. We're talking about positives. We're talking about something that cannot be questioned. Need. Most important word in the whole entire set of verses right there. Chuck, let's finish this thing up. We got two more. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. To me, if we want to look at something that's just inspiring in these verses, it's the word perish. It's the word perish. Hal, what do you think the word what, what do you think the word perish means? To be no more. 
to be no more, to just kind of go away, to just kind of be nothing. Well, this verse says that he's going to give us eternal life and we will never perish. How about that? Never perish. As a matter of fact, Becky and I talked about it on the way up here. We actually get a new body when all this takes place. So no matter what kind of health problems you're dealing with right now, or if you're too young to know what health problems are, you're going to eventually get them if you live long enough. Whatever they're going to be, you won't have to worry about them forever if you know Jesus because you know why? You won't perish. You get a new body and everything's cool. I mean, I got a, a lot of really good looking physique right here to lose. But I'm willing to lose it for what Christ Jesus has in plan for me. How about that? You know, I mean, I just, I can flex right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 refrain from that. I'm on. <laughs> That's why I didn't flex. <clears throat> no, it's true. We do not perish. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Chuck, go with it. What we got? For I am convinced. Hey, uh, Aaron, who's writing this? Paul. There you go. Who's he writing it to? Rose. Very good. For I am convinced that neither death nor life. Notice how Paul gives us the good and the bad on both sides about where our eternity takes place. How about that? For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, we will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a verse to end a message on. Paul is basically telling us, with Jesus, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. If you want the satisfaction of living in an absolute life, it's Christ Jesus. So for all of you that sit here now, I want you to walk out this door. And I want you to know that when it comes time for your piece of chocolate that you don't like, or when it comes time that you might have to eat a beet instead of a potato. Or heaven forbid, when your jack-in-the-box moment comes, you will be able to know going forward where you're going to spend eternity because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have told Him that you are a sinner. You have confessed your sins to Him. You have asked Him for forgiveness. You have asked Him to come into your heart. And you know that without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to be with him in glory when your time comes. Let us pray. Father, we come to you now. Thank you for this time. I thank you for the wonderful opportunity, Father. I thank you for the good time we had in here today, cutting up with one another. But Father, I also thank you for these tremendous, tremendous verses that you've given us. And I thank you, Father, that in, in and through all of this, that one little word, that singular word, Lord, need. That is the only need that we have in this world. We think we have so many, but Lord, at the end of the day, we just need you. Because with you, we have the world. So Father, I ask that you just remind, that you convict, that you, you burden the hearts of the ones sitting in here today to relinquish the pride that's holding them back. Relinquish the guilt. Relinquish the shame. Relinquish the, the thought of not being worthy. Relinquish the thought of thinking they don't need you. I would ask that you just do that for them today, Lord. That you work with them and work through them. That they will come to know you. So they will know that, Father, their life it will be ending with an absolute. And that will be seeing your face. For you not to judge them because they have passed from death to life. And I ask these things in Christ Jesus' beautiful and holy name. Amen. Will you please take your hymnals and let's stand and sing page 316.
to and, uh, and, and, and walk with her in. Uh, we want to have a special, special prayer today for Allison as she gets ready to go into possibly the next phase of life. Um, Allison, I think if anybody in here could attest the fact that life is like a box of chocolates, I think you could, you could, you could attest to that, couldn't you? Yeah, it ain't always pleasant, is it? No. So, you know, I'm glad to see Allison back here in this church with us. But I also pray that, you know, that the Lord just takes this time. He uses it with her. He, he challenges her uh, to go out and make something of herself from a job standpoint, make something of herself spiritually, make some make something of herself as a young Christian woman. Uh, just a challenge, you know. There's a lot more to just praying for somebody. Sometimes prayer for somebody needs to be also a challenge for somebody. So this prayer for you is a challenge. It's a challenge to, to be what God wants you to be. He's giving you the opportunity. You know, there's a lot of people who wouldn't make as far as you are right now. Anybody ever heard of suicide? How many times Allison have just you? Just you. How many times have y'all heard Allison speak about somebody that she went to school with when she was going to school with Thompson? Is there ever kids in school that commit suicide? Over some of the stupid stuff. But it's, it's true, it happens. It's a reality. There's a lot of kids that never make it because they give up on life. Well, regardless of what we've been through, we're still here today, so we have the opportunity to grow for him, grow with him, not just you and everybody else. But life can be tough. Life can be ugly. Uh, I can't use exactly the way I heard it. I can use similar. My wife knows exactly what I'm fixing to say. Uh, <clears throat> life can be a hen house ladder, short for the crack. And that's what it can be. It can be rough, it can be ugly, but you're here. So allow God to, uh, to remind you to make something of it. You've got a grand opportunity. So I want to have closing prayer, but I also want to, uh, to lift out some up during this time, and we can close with this. Let's pray. What, what, what? what is the day of your exam? This, this kind of Friday? <coughs> okay. And it's about, it's, it's, exams this Friday. Yeah, it's about the exam, but it's also about life after. Oh, I know. But yeah, it, it, it is. Passing it is. this board very important. Yeah, it is. It's a phase. It's a step. The next step. It's a step. That's exactly right. Diane, you've, you've, of course, passed several tests in your life. You've, you've accomplished many uh, collegiate uh, things as, as far as testing, as far as making the grade, getting the degrees, and things of that nature. Uh, it is just a step, is it not? And even though it prepares you some for life down the road, does it prepare, does it prepare you for all of it? Not a bit. Let's look at your same thing. I mean, you ain't been that long ago finished your school. You know, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, school's tough. Tests are hard. But tests are not life. I watch engineers coming out seven years of schooling, fresh in their mind, and just, just as green as a dollar bill. Don't have a clue. That's what exactly electricity right. to do to them, what a piece of machine to eat you alive. That's exactly right. They have no idea what a rotating chair will do to a human being's body. But yeah, they got all the children. Mine must be too. Huh? Mine must be too. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, great day. Wish you the best on your test. But also life happens. Okay? That's right. Father, we come to you now. Thank you for this time. I thank you for the long, wonderful opportunity. I thank you, Father, that, that Allison is here with us this morning. Uh, I ask that you would, uh, that you, you would challenge her, Lord. That you would challenge her. Uh, that you would bless her in her test and bless her in her and her grades. Uh, but Father, also beyond. Father, we know that there's there's grace, there's life beyond the cross. Uh, as well as there is life beyond just whatever the next step is. So Father, we just ask that you would, uh, would be with her. But we also ask that she will turn to you. Because this is a two-sided thing, Lord. You're always there for us. But we need to be reminded to turn to you. So Father, I pray that, that she turns to you. I pray that you bless her in her, in her new job. Uh, pray, that you, pray that you bless her in her travels. 
And I pray that you bless her in, in going forward and in creating the next phase of her life. And I pray that she will continue to keep you in her life, Lord, in a way of where she turns to you daily. She looks upon you daily and she draws near to you. So, Father, we just ask you for that. For today's message, Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you for each and every one that's here today. I thank you for each and every one that interacted. And I pray for all of them now for just safe travel and mercy for everybody going back, for safety on their jobs, and just uh, and that you, you just use us as a small congregation to touch someone outside these doors, Lord, just to enrich your kingdom, to enhance your kingdom, Lord, so that somebody else can have that absolute moment in their life when they know that their eternity is sin, where, where their faith going forward will be, will be spent with you in glory. And we ask these things in Christ Jesus' beautiful and holy name. Amen. Thank y'all so much. <laughs>